In a land-grant university, which OSU is, teaching, research, and extension are the three main thrust areas. Well, one department has quite an insect collection to help support these educational endeavors, especially in the field of entomology. Recently, we talked with entomologist and insect museum curator Don Arnold about the biggest little bug collection in the nation. Well, the museum started back in the early 1930s with some people who collected insects during the summer as part of a WPA project, I think, something along that line. And it's named the K.C. Emerson Entomology Museum. It's named after K.C. Emerson, who is the first person who got a Ph.D. in this department back in the 1940s. We named it after him primarily because he gave us his lice collection. The lice collection is supposed to be the third best collection in the world, second or third to the British Museum and the U.S. National Museum. It's fairly large, uh, 25,000 slides or so, and represents most of the described lice that are found in the entire world. We have a, not a large mosquito collection, but a good collection. It was identified by an expert in the field, mostly collected by him as well, and he donated it to us when he retired. It's, uh, represents most of the mosquito species that are known to occur in this country. The difference between insects and some of the other things we have is, is first off the number of legs. Insects have six legs. Most of these other groups uh, have more than that. Spiders and ticks have eight legs. We have millipedes, of course, with several hundred legs and on up. Much to his surprise, Dr. Arnold has even been credited with finding a new species of spider that he collected many years ago. Well, of course, when I picked these spiders up down in southeast Oklahoma, I had no idea they were any different from any other tarantula. We thought then that there was probably just one kind of tarantula here. But then a man from England comes by and wants to look at them, and he decides that we actually have three or four specimens, I mean species here and that this one has not been described before. So he picks out a couple of these that I caught in southeast Oklahoma 10 or 15 years ago as a new species. I think he's going to call it Dugisiella arnoldi. This hasn't actually been published yet, but that's the plan, I understand. The museum is not exactly open to the public just to wander into when they want to. However, we do conduct tours by arrangement, or if someone wants to come in and get hold of me, I can usually show them through it. Uh, some of the fleas and the lice and these sorts of things are not terribly interesting to most people, but we do have some better looking stuff, big butterflies and pretty beetles and that kind of thing. This is primarily a research collection. Uh, I use it mostly to help me identify insects that are sent in. The other thing we do with it then is loan specimens to people that are working with these various groups. There is a little bit of display function now and then and here and there, or we take tours through it and that kind of thing, but uh, mostly it's research.